How is this poem? <laughs> if you can read it, take a moment to read it. Like it? Yes. Awesome? Yes. Not awesome? Awesome. Thank you, says Chad GPT. <laughs> I'm not a poem kind of guy. I cannot write much. So here's a pencil art of a dog curling with a cat. Probably a story of my home, your home. How is it? Nice? No? You don't love cats or dogs? I need a bit louder voice. Do you like it or not? Yes! Thank you, says Dolly 2.0. Have you ever wondered that you had a kind of assistant or a machine that could do all your bidding so that you could just go out on a beach, sip your beer and chill all day while you are at the busiest of a schedule? Have you? Or have you not? Yes. We have, right? We want to be more lazy than we are right now. And that future is definitely coming. Hold on for a sec. We'll come back, come back to that later on. This is a peer-reviewed article published in a reputed journal you can read the heading open ai platforms in nursing education tool for academic progress or abuse and the author name is shioban o Kerner. and not just that chat gpt is also a co-author in this journal or article this is all possible because 2020s marked demonetization and democratization of AI for the first time in human history. By demonetization, I mean AI is now more accessible, it's cheaper, I can afford it, even you can afford it, AI now. Software developers can use AI because it has become so cheap. And AI is no longer limited to expensive research facilities of scientists or super secured government agencies. It is your tool set, it is my tool set, it is everyone's tool set. Writers use it, artists use it, health professionals use it, doctors use it, engineers use it, politicians use it, professors use it. Not just that, even students use it. But don't tell your professor friends because we don't want professors to know that students use ChatGPT now. Let's go back in time. This is probably from the early 1900s. Can someone guess what this is? No? But I bet almost every one of you have used this. We all use telephones now. Yes? Even, of, even us minimal people use telephone, mobile phone, dollar phone, bigger smartphone, whatever we use, we use phones now. And this is how phones started. If I had to call you, I would call this lady sitting right there and ask her to connect me to you. Then she would find us, which two holes are us. She would plug us together through a physical jack and boom, we are connected. We could talk for a couple of minutes and she would plug us out physically. That's how telephones started. And then soon, telephones became popular. Instead of one human being being there, now there's an array of human operators who are actively busy connecting more and more people every day. Telephones got cheaper, more accessible. In other words, telephone became demonetized and democratized. And soon this happened. Computers were invented. Computers replaced everything. Now I can instantly dial you on my phone and we're connected. We don't need to talk for a couple of minutes. Now we can talk for hours. That's how fast the world has moved since the 1900s. Let's go into 1950s now. This was an era when industrialization was its peak. After the Second World War, a lot of automobile companies emerged. And this is a plant of an automobile company, car maker company, where super expert and trained engineers, technicians are making cars every day and night. They are so talented that they had to make a car accurate that could hold us, drive us everywhere in the world. And we move from to 2020s. This is how a Toyota's plant look like now. Where are all the human beings? Where are all the talented technicians? They are all replaced. You can see there are robots, there are assembly plants. They are working not just day and night. 
they are working 24 hours a day seven days a week and throughout the year making cars which are better which are more safer which are precise accurately built and cheaper so that everybody can purchase let's go back in the 1880s now can you recognize what this is light bulb right these were the initial light bulbs and this is the famous scientist who invented it Thomas Alva Edison it took him 14 months of continuous effort testing 1800 different materials to just produce a light bulb that lasted 14 and half hours the science was very simple pass electricity as long as it does not get lit and emit light without breaking it apart science so simple but then again one of the greatest minds of human history had to spend years months trying so many items just for the light bulb and if we look at today what are we capable of we can do this in seconds to minutes because computers have advanced so much and material science has progressed so much that what edition had to spend doing 18 months can be done in a couple of hours at most that's how fast the world is moving So in a nutshell, clerical works, highly skilled technicians, or even scientists, some of the greatest minds in human history, they are no match to today's computers. In fact, computers and robots have done, surpassed us human beings in almost every realm we can think about. What we used to see in fairy tales and epic tales are becoming realities now think of ramayana there were flying chariots soon enough there will be flying cars and this will happen in our own decade it, it's not even that far and hopefully in nepal too we'll be able to see flying cars very soon we have heard about star trek where there are star ships flying above us where people are living that is a reality now Astronauts live in international space stations and look down below from the skies. We have seen Jarvis in Iron Man. That is already a reality now. Alexa, Siri, Hey Google, so many assistants, they do things for us. They sob for us. They sing for us. They wake us up. They put us down to sleep. They do our things. Even uh, in Western countries, they fill up our fridges with foods and groceries. Who would have thought about drones shooting us down from the skies when they rolled, when they enrolled to be terrorists? Killer drones are already there up in the skies. How many of us have seen robotic vacuum cleaners? I'm pretty sure some of you might even have it or at least seen those in the videos. Robotic vacuum cleaners are playing with our dogs and cats without even asking us, can I play with a dog? Can I play with a cat? But they are already playing, they're cleaning our houses without us telling them where to clean or where not to clean. Things have gone so, so ahead. Let's go back to chat GPT once again. Facebook is such a disruptive technology from 2004. It took Facebook 300 days approximately to reach first 1 million users. Spotify did that in half the time. Instagram cut it by even half. And today, chat GPT did that in just five days. In contrast, that is 60 times faster than what Facebook could have achieved. That means AI is progressing at such an exponentially faster rate than what we have witnessed before. I sell cakes online today. It was an innovative thing to do five years back. I built an entire company on top of an IT service that powers end-to-end -end function of a bakery. Artificial intelligence replaced partially logistics. Business process automation systems reduced human errors by more than 10 times. Robotic process automation systems allows the bakery to operate even when there is no human being present physically to manage things. And I would not be surprised if tomorrow augmented reality and virtual reality will replace or change the whole experience economy that businesses like mine thrives upon and if i cannot change i might or most definitely will go out of business and something radically 
will take over. So, should we be scared? Let me ask you again. Should we be scared of machines and AI? I see a couple of heads nodding, yes. I see some doctors saying, no, machines will never eat my job. So it's a debate, right? And it's time we rethink. Not get scared, let me reiterate. It's time we rethink. We rethink how we've been doing business. We rethink economy, we rethink health, politics. Almost every sector the society is built upon, it's time to rethink. And if we rethink, we can find one single solution. It's a very simple solution, simply because machines are far better at replicating than we human beings will ever be able to. We are limited by our, by our physical capacities, whereas machines, all the machine needs is a mobile oil, and they can work throughout the day and night and forever until they expire. So it is time we rethink and figure out a solution which I will tell you. The solution is very simple. Stop replication because machines have done that far better. I've shown you so many examples where machines have already surpassed us human beings in terms of replication. But there is one thing that's still behind, at least for now. They do not have the complex human brain capacity to innovate. So finally, stop replicating and start innovating. Make this your guru mantra for tomorrow. Make this your guru mantra for the future. Whatever you are in, whatever you're going to do, stop replicating, start innovating. I want all of you to say after me. Stop. Replicating. Start. Innovating. Once again, louder. Stop. Replicating. Start. Innovating. Thank you so much.